And verse 8, it says, Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, with which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, or look around, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. This is, the, this is Pharaoh saying this. Verse 10, he says, Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. So this is what Pharaoh did because he felt threatened by the people of God. Verse 11, it says, Therefore they did set over them taskmasters. To what? To afflict them with their burdens. Sounds a lot like what the devil likes to do. And they built for Pharaoh. This is talking about the children of Israel. They had taskmasters set over them, and this is the task at hand. They built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4 and 13, we don't have to turn there, but we understand most of us quote this scripture, but it says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Praise God. For just a little while tonight on, you know, in, in, with the help of the Lord, I, look, I know there's, there's young people here, there's, there's, there's adults that are here, all of that. I mean, this, this is something that if, if you have been feeling like the devil's been attacking you tonight, this is to you. Amen. Because I, I want to preach on this subject just for a little while. Things Pharaoh doesn't want you to know. Things Pharaoh doesn't want you to know. Come on, there's some things the devil doesn't want you to know. Come on, there's some things that he doesn't want you to realize. Oh, come on, somebody. I wonder if we could put our Bibles down. Why don't we lift our hands to the Lord in this house right now? Come on. Somebody lift up the, Lord, the name of Jesus in this house. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you, God. We magnify you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, why don't we put our hands up together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for standing tonight. You may be seated. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't sit on the preacher. <laughs> praise God. Amen. There was a statement made. Anyone in the house like to drive Ford by raising of hands? Oh, we have no Ford people in the house tonight. Okay, we got one. All right, praise God. Uh, anyone like GMC? <laughs> praise God. How about Dodge? We got any Dodge people in the house tonight? All right, that's the true. That's, that's it right there. Praise God. We got some Dodge people here today. Amen. I'm not, well, you guys probably know what I am. Only because of what I have, praise God. But there was a statement made by the man who started Ford Company, Henry Ford. And the statement that he made, and I would, I, you know, this is, I would, I would think that he probably had some good backing into what he said because of what he was able to accomplish. I mean, this was in the early 1900s, and he was able to create a massive franchise and it's still going on over 100 years later. And so he makes this statement, and it's so true. He says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Can I tell someone today, there's a battle up here in the mind. And, and can I tell you that sometimes we can convince ourselves that we are unable 
praise God. Amen. I want to I wanna just tell a little, uh, it's not a really, it kind of is a story, but talk about something here tonight just for a little while. Since the year 1886, runners all over, runners, runners all over the world had been attempting to run one mile in less than four minutes and no one could do it. And many, many runners had tried for decades, and it had become widely accepted throughout that time that it was humanly impossible to run a mile in less than four minutes. Until a man by the name of Roger Bannister did it in the year 1954. And so this was the year after Mount Everest was first summited by Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay becoming the first people to stand atop the world's highest mountain. And so once people, get this, this is very interesting to me, once people witnessed that Roger Bannister could achieve this goal of running a four-minute mile. Their belief began to change. And then just over a month later, another runner did it. And within a year, three more runners did it. And by today, thousands of runners have broken the four-minute barrier. And so many people that have tried to study this phenomenon, they, they thought maybe, oh, well, this is just probably some evolution in human genetics that accounted for this new ability to be able to run faster. And the answer was obviously no, but it was determined by, by those that were studying that it was a result of a simple change of mindset. That was, all, that was all it was. People had thought it was impossible. That no man, no woman could break a four-minute mile. Amen. But can I tell someone today that it's time for the church to stop setting barriers in our mindsets. Come on. I'm telling you today. That we as people can get to the place where we, we hear, you know what, this is too hard. Come on, we've, I, I, there's probably every one of us are guilty of making the statement, this is too difficult to do. It cannot be done. Well, I want to come against that spirit in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you that our Bible still says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Praise God. And I understand there's, there's balance in that statement. Amen. But let me tell you that if God has a will for your life, amen, and you know it's God's will, that he will make a way for you to perform his will. Praise God. Amen. Another interesting thing here is there was an experiment that was done by a scientist. And this experience was as he takes... The scientist takes a glass jar. I don't have a glass jar today. I have a water bottle. He takes a glass jar, and he puts hundreds of fleas, and probably many of you have heard this experiment, but they put all hundreds of these fleas in this glass jar. And, of course, what fleas do is they, they hop and they jump all over the place. And so uh, there was times where these fleas would even jump outside of the jar. Just normal process. Well, the scientist, his experiment was, he's like, okay, now, now that I got these fleas in this jar, I'm going to put a lid. I'm going to put a lid right on top of this this jar. And so what the fleas start doing, they they kept jumping. And to an extent where they would even hit the lid. And the scientist left the lid on for three days. And after three days, he took off the lid. And there was a, a single flea that would jump higher than where the lid used to be. Can I tell you that the devil wants to convince you that it cannot be done. 
The devil wants to convince people that there are some things that you deal with in your life that are just going to be there for the rest of your life. Come on. There's some battles that just can't be won. There's some addictions that just can't be broken. There's just some family genetics that cannot be overcome. But I want to tell someone here today that you are not determined today by, by your family's heritage. You are not determined here today by some genetic. You are not determined by some past sin that you've had in your life. But I want to tell someone today that through God, you are well able to overcome. Come on, somebody. And the devil's put a lid over your, your life and it's gotten you convinced that you can't do it. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's talk about, let's talk about Pharaoh for a little bit. Pharaoh, he realized how mighty the people of God were. Can I tell you, he realized their capabilities. He realized how numerous they were. And can I tell you that if the people of God would have realized what Pharaoh realized, amen, of how powerful they really were, if they would have understood that they didn't have to live under a taskmaster, Come on, I'm telling you, they had the ability to overcome Egypt just like that. But what did, what, did, what did Pharaoh do? He wanted them to not realize. He wanted them to not know their capabilities. He, he didn't want them to, he wanted to put over them taskmasters. Can I tell you, that's, that's exactly what the devil does. You know what? He wants, to, he wants to keep you in bondage and he wants to start out. He wants to start out easy. He wants to start out slow. Uh, and he wants, to, he wants to put over your life uh, taskmasters uh, and create. Uh, in, in this time, in this place, uh, for, the, for the children of Israel, there was forced labor. Praise God. And this was under a Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. But before they were living in the land of Goshen uh, with, that, with the Pharaoh before, they, they lived freely. But now their freedoms are being taken away. You know, the Bible, we read it, that the, task, the, the, the taskmasters were put over them and caused the children of Israel to build for Pharaoh treasure cities. And when these taskmasters were put over them, there were... There were taskmasters that were put in two classes. The one was for the lower class that actually enforced the labor. So those that probably had the whip and, and made, the, made the children of Israel work harder. And then there was the upper class of the superintendent taskmasters that directed the overall labor. And so when they were building these treasure cities for Pharaoh... Uh, in, in Pithom and Ramses. You know what treasure cities were? They were strongholds. Or depots of storing weaponry and provisions. Or even, even uh, in fact, there's, there's, there's history that you can read that says that all public or royal buildings in ancient Egypt were built by captives. And there was even on some of these buildings a description that would be placed on those buildings that would say that no free citizen had been engaged in this servile employment. And so in other words, they had, it, they had them brainwashed in a sense. Not brainwashed, but you know what I mean. They had them convinced that this had to be done by, by, their, by them as slaves. And so... There was, there was the city that was called, named Python, which meant house or temple of the sun god. And it was not very far, probably not very far from the main seat of the sun god's worship in a place called Heliopolis. Both of these cities have been noted to have been in Goshen, where dwelt the children of Israel. In Egypt 
And so it has also been speculated that these treasure cities were defense cities and garrisons. Amen. And so in other words, they would be used as a defense for outside invasions. But the, the other thing that they would be used for on top of storage, storing provision and weaponry is those, those very cities that the children of Israel were being forced to build were also in part to keep the children of Israel in. Oh, let me say that again. The taskmasters of Egypt that were over the people of Israel were ca causing them to build the own, their, the, pretty much their own prison. Can I tell someone today that the devil wants to do that in lives? He wants to, he wants to, he wants to kind of, you know, push you into some things to where you begin to build up your own strongholds. And you give in to that, and you give in to this, and, and you partake of that, and you partake of this, and you get to the point where, where you're convinced that you're trapped. And you're convinced that there's no way out. You can't get out of this situation. Let me tell you, that's a lie from hell. Amen. Come on, you can get out of that situation. Come on, you can't get away from that sin. You can't get away from the bondage. You can't get away from the addiction. Uh, come on, what, what's going on is simply the devil doesn't want you to know that you're capable uh, of being able to blow through that wall uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, he wants you to be convinced uh, that you don't have the ability that you're going to stay in that place uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, but come on, uh, there's people in this house today uh, that you know what I'm preaching uh, and you know because you feel it uh, on a day to day basis uh, but the devil has you convinced that there's no way out there's no hope there's no escape come on somebody oh hallelujah there's people that oh come on somebody there's people in this house that are convinced that you cannot do a work for God because of your past come on that's a lie from hell Oh, come on, somebody. There's people in this place uh, that believe that you really can't fully live for God uh, because you're scared uh, of what maybe family might think of you. Uh, let me just tell you, uh, come on, somebody. Uh, the devil is still a liar. Uh, Come on, the devil is still a liar. Uh, come on, he's, he's, trying to, he's trying to be a taskmaster over your life uh, to build up strongholds uh, that are going to keep you bound if you let it. Uh, but let me tell you, tonight, uh, come on, can be a night uh, where you say enough's enough. Uh, I'm not going to be under this bondage any longer. Uh, I'm not going to be in this manner any longer. Uh, but I'm going to break out in Jesus' name. Oh, somebody lift your hands to the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me remind someone today, the battle is right here. The battle is right here. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but our weapons are mighty through God. To what? The pulling down of strongholds. Come on, there's strongholds and lives in this house that need to come down tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Strongholds need to come down. But let's read verse 5. The Bible says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know what that word imaginations, what that word comes from in the Greek? It comes from originally, the root word is logos. Logos, which is word. Word. But the logos or the word is Jesus Christ. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh. Come on, somebody. Amen. But can I tell someone today that these imaginations, the logos or the thoughts in our own mind, we've got to bring those 
that Logos, we've got to bring our Logos under subjection to Him who is the Word. We've got to bring our own ideas, our own thoughts, come on, our own persuasions, what we're convinced of, and we've got to bring that under what God's Word says. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, if God's Word says, I am more than able, uh, come on, then I, I'm going to take uh, my own thoughts uh, and I'm going to subject it uh, to the Word of God. Uh, if the Bible says I'm more than able, uh, then I'm going to believe I'm more than able. Uh, come on, I may doubt it. Uh, I may not believe it, uh, but I'm going to believe the Word of God. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, if the Word of God says uh, you can be more than a conqueror. Uh, come on. Uh, doesn't matter if you think you're able. Uh, come on. My Bible says you're able. Uh, come on, somebody. Come on. It, it doesn't matter if you believe uh, that you're going to be under the bondage of sin. Our Bible says you can be delivered. And I'm going to choose to subject my thoughts to his thoughts. Praise God. Praise God. The devil wants you to be convinced that you can't do it. That you can't make it. Come on, somebody. There's no way you can break from that family. Curse, for lack of a better phrase. That characteristic that's been passed down to you from generation to generation. Come on, I know what I'm preaching today. That, that you'll always be an alcoholic. Come on, that you'll always be a drug addict. That you'll always be depressed. That you're always going to be full of anxiety. Come on, that you're always going to be living under the circumstances. Uh, come on, that you're always going to be uh, at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, come on, that you're, you're such a failure. Come on, you know what that is? It's the lies of hell. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, but my Bible says, uh, come on, our Bible says uh, that we are well able. Uh, come on, that we are mighty through God. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Mighty. Someone shout, mighty. mighty. Come on, someone say it again. Mighty. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, it says, Year of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, somebody. Come on. I, I understand uh, that today if you haven't received the Holy Ghost uh, and, and you feel like there's no way out, well, let me just tell you that the way out is by repenting of your sins. Uh, come on. Uh, and being baptized uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's what it was for those uh, that were in Egypt. Praise God. Those that were under the taskmasters. Come on. Those that were being whipped on a daily basis. Forced to build up strongholds in Egypt. Forced to build whatever it was that they wanted uh, them to build. Praise God. You know what happened? Uh, God sent a deliverer. Come on. And his name was Moses. And he's like, you know what? I've heard the cries of my people. Come on, I've heard the cries of my people, and I'm going to send you uh, to go, uh, and I want you to bring my people out of Egypt. Uh, come on, it still takes uh, get, leaving Egypt. Uh, it still takes uh, repentance. Uh, it still takes uh, leaving it behind, uh, leaving behind uh, the taskmasters, uh, leaving behind uh, the strongholds, uh, leaving behind uh, the fortifications, uh, come on, of sin, uh, Leaving it behind. And going through the water. Oh, come on. Oh, I feel my help coming on tonight. Amen. When those children of Israel passed through that Red Sea. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And got to the other side. Amen. I wonder if there were any Israelites that looked back. I don't know how far the Red Sea is from, from one side to the other. I've never been there. I haven't done the study of, of how big it was. Amen. I'm sure it was massive. But I wonder if, if they were able to see as this cloud of people, their former taskmasters were coming. Say, so, you know what? We can, we, can, we can still get them. It's dry. Let's go. Let's go. And so they're, they're looking back. 
And they begin to recognize, oh yeah, here, there's, Mr. there's, there's what's his name? Uh, he beat me last Friday, uh, and he was trying to, trying to make me go a little bit harder at my work. Uh, and that taskmaster over there, uh, oh, he was the one uh, that, that, that made us and enforced uh, that we not only, uh, uh, we, we're not only bringing straw, we, we had to go make our own straw to build these big old pillars. Uh, come on, it was that guy over there. But in a moment when God tells Moses, all right, Moses, uh, raise up that rod come on and that those waves just begin to crash in and take every single taskmaster out let me tell you it still takes if you haven't been baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ come on it still takes that come on it still takes that I want to leave behind the taskmasters I want to leave behind Egypt I want to leave it behind Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There's someone in this house today that you don't believe a word of preaching that I'm preaching right now. <laughs> Praise God. Let me tell you, we're preaching the word tonight. Come on, you don't have to live the way that your family's always lived. Come on, you don't. Come on, somebody. You don't. Have, your, your your parents might tell you, uh, oh yeah, that church that you visit here and there. It's a crazy people. Uh, come on, they don't know what they're talking about. Let me tell you, uh, we know what we're talking about. Uh, we're preaching the word of God. Uh, there's people in this house. Uh, come on, that used to be. Uh, oh, come on, broke, uh, busted, and disgusted. Uh, they had nothing. Uh, they had their life uh, in chains, uh, but they've been set free. Uh, come on, there's people in the place uh, that I'm. Sure used to be homeless uh, and on drugs, uh, but they're not anymore. Uh, why? Uh, because of the saving word uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, come on, there's testimonies. Oh, come on. I wonder if there's anyone in the house that knows the testimony, the, the, mo the testimony that God's given you. Uh, that there was once a day uh, where you didn't have anything. But God. But God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me preach for a moment. Amen. Come on, somebody. You might be a young person here today. Come on, you might be convinced that you've got to go down the same pathway. The same pathway. That your parents, your grandparents, maybe your brother, your sister, come on, that they've gone down. Come on, you don't have to live the way that they live. Let me tell you, uh, there's a better way. Come on, there's a better way. Come on. There's not a single ounce of regret inside of me for being raised in the house of truth. Let me tell you, it's the best life. Let me tell you, it's the most life, the, the most free life that you can live is living for God. Come on, somebody, and worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Why don't we lift our hands to the Lord right now? Where you're at? Come on, where you're at right now, begin to worship God. Come on, I want to come against those lies. Come on, the devil has you convinced that you can't be used of God. Come on, somebody, that's a lie from hell. Come on, I want to tell you, if you feel like you're trapped right now by the, by the lies and the fortifications and the strongholds of Satan, let me tell you, there's some weapons that we can use. Come on, and our weapons are mighty. Come on, and my Bible says that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Come on, somebody. You can make it. You can do it. You can be set free. You can live for God in an age. Come on. Of a worldly age. Hallelujah. There's some things Pharaoh doesn't want you to know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Romans 8 and 31 says, What shall we say? Or then say to these things, if God be for us. Think about that for a second. Come on, God's on your side today. Come on, he's fighting for you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, if God is on your side, 
You don't need anyone else beside you or behind you. Oh, come on, somebody. If God is on your side, come on, somebody. You can live for God in freedom. Oh, come on, somebody. You can make it. You can be a blood bot. Come on, child of God. And you can do it without shame. Come on. I don't need to be ashamed of this gospel because it's the gospel that saved me. It's the gospel that delivered me. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I want to read, I want to read something in the scripture here for a moment. Amen. We're all familiar mostly probably with the sons of Korah or with Korah. Amen. Korah was an enemy, well, because of a bad spirit that got a hold of him. He was in direct opposition to the man of God, Moses. When, when Moses was trying to bring them out to the promised land, Korah wanted to usurp the authority of Moses along with others. And so the Bible tells us that there was a great phenomenon that God allowed the earth to open up and swallowed up all of Korah and those that were united with him against Moses and against the leadership of Israel. But can I tell you that there were later sons of Korah. Come on. There were sons of Korah that wrote scripture, come on, in the word of God, and Psalms, se several of them. Let me, let me just read one. This is the sons of Korah, the sons of a man that hated a man of God. The sons of a man that had problems with authority. The sons of a man uh, that came up against Moses. You know what they said? They said in Psalm 44, in verse 1, they said, We have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thine countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. This is the sons of Korah. They say this in verse 4, Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob through Thee will we push down our enemies. Come on. Through thy name will we tread them under that rise up against us. These are the sons of Korah. Let me just tell you. Oh, I don't know why I feel this tonight. Amen. Let me just tell you. It doesn't matter an ounce how your parents live. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, I'm preaching from experience here tonight. It doesn't matter an ounce what takes place in your family at all, period. These sons of Korah, they are living proof. Come on. They could have risen up in the same spirit that Korah had. They could have said, you know what? God ain't done nothing for me. They could have said, you know what, everything I have in my life is by my own hand. Come on, somebody. Oh, everything I, oh, my house, the cars I got, everything I got, I worked for it. Praise God, I did it all on my own. But can I tell you that the sons of Korah, they realized where their help came from. 
Come on, it didn't matter if way back down the heritage line, uh, the ancestry list, uh, that there was a man named Korah that didn't think that way. Uh, they said, you know what? Uh, he might have been our great, 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 whatever great grandpa. But let me tell you, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be marked uh, by, by what he did. Uh, I'm going to realize, uh, come on, uh, who my God is. Uh, I'm going to realize uh, the life I want to live. Uh, I'm going to overcome. Come on, why don't we stand in this house tonight? Praise God. Come on, there's things that Pharaoh doesn't want you to know. There's things that the devil doesn't want you to know. Come on, there's some things that Satan doesn't want you to know. Uh, let me tell you, he doesn't want you to know uh, and to realize that you can live for God. Uh, come on, he doesn't want you to realize uh, that you can be uh, everything that God's called you to be. Uh, come on, uh, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he wants to have you convinced uh, that your family can never be saved. Uh, let me tell you, that's a lie from hell. Uh, your family can be saved. Uh, keep on praying. Uh, keep on seeking God. Uh, keep reading the word. Uh, keep reaching out to them. Praise God. Hallelujah. I wonder if we could all lift our hands on this house. I want to ask someone today, whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. Whose report? Come on, whose report are you going to believe? Come on, when them 12 spies got back from the promised land, keynote, keyword promised. It was promised by God. To them when they got back 10 of them said yeah the fruit is great here partake of some they had the Bible says that they carried huge grapes on a big old branch stick some heavy grapes praise God but it was from the promised land they brought it back for the people to try and they said, yeah, you know, it does flow with milk and honey just like God promised it would. It's everything that God said it would be. Except sons of Anak dwell there. They're big. And they're bad. Praise God. And the Bible says that they made a statement which, which shows us what was going on right here. They said, in our sight, we were as grasshoppers in comparison to them. That was, that was a lie from hell. Because Caleb, Joshua, they hear what they're saying. And immediately, the Bible says, Caleb stands up and stilled them and said, No, 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 we are well able. But I want to ask someone today, whose report are you going to listen to? Come on, whose report are you going to believe? Come on, are you going to believe? Come on, that the devil's con what the devil's tried to convince you of, that you can't do it? That you can't make it. That you can't be prosperous. That you don't get the promised land. That you don't partake in the good things of God. I want to believe what the minority says. Joshua and Caleb because they said no, 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 no we are well able <laughs> come on it wasn't because there weren't giants there were there's going to be some giants you got to take down come on there's going to be some enemies you got to take down praise God but can I tell you that God is with you come on it doesn't matter how big the giant is God is able come on somebody if God before you Come on, if God before you, if God before you, who can stand against? Come on, whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? 
Come on, I want to believe. I'm going to choose. You can choose right now. Come on, let me tell you, you can choose right now. There, can, can I tell you that right now in this place, right now in this place, there are, there are maybe at least two kinds of mindsets that are in this place. There's there maybe, I would say three. There's the mindset that says, yes, preacher, I believe 100% of what you're preaching. And then there's the other mindset that's fully persuaded and convinced that there's no possible way. But then there's some in the house that you're kind of in between. And you're kind of halting between two opinions. Come on, I, I, I'm preaching to you tonight. Let me, let me, let it be the extra shove. Come on. Of the word of God tonight to convince you. You're well able. Come on, you can overcome. Come on, you can make it. Come on, you can live for God. Come on, I want to freaking all lift our hands to the Lord right now where you're at. Just where you're at. Come on, where you're standing. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord right here in this place. Come on, you can make it. Come on, you're well able. Come on, with God, uh, with God, uh, you can make it. Oh, somebody lift your voice unto the Lord in this house. Come on, somebody lift your voice unto the Lord of this house. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, you're able. Come on, you're able. Come on, you have some weapons that are mighty. You have some weapons that work. You have some weapons that are well able. The devil knows that if you can be convinced that you're not able, that you'll stay in that place for as long as possible. But let me tell you, you are well able. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. There's people in this house right now. Come on. You just got to gotta step out of faith right now. Come on. You need to step out of faith and just believe the report of the Lord. Come on. Come on. The devil's in. Come on. He wants to convince you right now. Right now. Come on. Someone needs to kick the devil out of your life. Come on, somebody. Someone needs to say, get it behind me, Satan. Come on, get me behind me, Satan. Come on, you don't belong in my family. Come on, you don't belong in my church. Come on, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Come on, come on, there's revival in your life. There's revival in your family. There's revival. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Can I tell you the word's gone forth? What are you going to do with it? Come on, what are you going to do with it? Come on. Come on. I'm going to go in the promised land. Come on, somebody. My children. Come on. My children are going to be saved. Come on, somebody. Come on. Backslid people from this house of God are going to come back in Jesus' name. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, we're well able. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, I feel right now there's still kind of a... Come on. Come on, we're in a warfare right now. We're in a warfare right now. I wonder if we could just turn this place right now. It doesn't matter if you want to come up to the front, that's all right. If you want to stay in your pew, that's all right. But I wonder if we could just, come on, why don't we just create a prayer meeting right now? Come on, why don't the church just pray right now? Come on, there's people in this house uh, that need uh, delivering hand of God. Uh, there's people in this place uh, that need something to change uh, in their life. Uh, there's people in this house uh, that are in between two opinions. Uh, there's people in this house, uh, come on, uh, that you're trying to believe it, uh, but it's hard to believe. Uh, come on, there's people in this house uh, that you're almost persuaded. Uh, you're almost persuaded. Uh, come on, uh, but let's pray right now. Come on. Why don't we pray right now in the Holy Ghost? Come on. Oh, hallelujah. 
Come on, pray, 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 pray.